Welcome to the top 10 fish you haven't considered for your reef tank. So let's get right into the video. Starting out at the number 10 spot on our list, we have the Panemic Barnacle Blenny. Also known as a Hancock's Blenny, it needs at least a 10 gallon aquarium that is established and has lots of rocks for it to hide in. But one of those barnacles you see in aquarium stores will do just fine. Like a um, aquarium, I think you can buy them off uh, Aquarium Depot or Live Aquaria under Aquarium Supply. These guys are a real treat to watch during feeding time. They just bolt out of the rock work or barnacle and grab the food. It's amazing to watch. During the day, that's the best time to watch them because they're observant. And they watch you and you watch them. So they know you exist. Coming in at the number 9 spot is the Eyebrow Barnacle Blenny. It should be put into at least a 30 gallon aquarium with lots of hiding places that is well established. This little guy is similar to the Panamic Blenny where he dashes around and is very observant. Which I find pretty cool. And also is a carnivorous little guy, so you want to make sure he gets lots of mice and shrimp. If these guys are hungry enough, they will go after your inverts, so make sure they are well fed or they will attack your inverts. These guys do hold a little special place in my heart though. They uh, they kind of remind me of the fish from Finding Nemo, the anglerfish. The one that like, when they're exploring the deep and Dory and the marlin. And then it, it's like a little blue, light comes up behind them and then like scares them. Coming in at the number eight spot we have the Swiss Guard Basilette. This is a small but eye-catching fish coming in at just three inches. These guys make a nice addition to any community tank or any community reef tank. But these guys will eat your inverts so make sure you guys don't have any inverts that you care about that these guys can get their mouths on. These guys prefer nice meaty foods like mice's shrimp or Maybe a little bit of squid here and there, but I would probably feed the mice a shrimp if I had one myself. But I would not recommend getting one immediately um, if you're a beginner, just because of the uh, ability not to have, have like hermit crabs all the time and having to go to the store and buy new ones. It would just be probably frustrating. Coming in at the number seven spot on our list, we have the Valentini Puffer which goes by many names such as the Toby Puffer, the Valentini Toby Puffer. This fish should be in a 30 gallon soft coral reef or a fish only 30 gallon tank. With plenty of inverts, it can eat is preferred so it can whittle down its beak naturally without you having to trim it because its beak will eventually grow shut. It may eat your LPS or your SPS corals, so make sure to watch out for that. Sometimes it won't even eat them, but I haven't had any trouble with mine, so you shouldn't uh, have any trouble uh, as long as you keep yours fed. But yeah, it's just a cool fish. Make sure to give him some extra attention, like hand feed him shrimp, and make sure that the shrimp is soaked in vitamins. That's always useful. Make sure they're healthy and don't get an infection. Make sure they're eating properly. Try putting a little garlic on it. That's always useful. Coming at the number six spot on our list, we have the wart skin anglerfish. This fish looks a lot like rock or coral that you would see in the ocean. And it also has the ability to change its colors to its surroundings, much like the fox face does when it, um, it gets introduced to a new tank the angler is a very good reef dweller. It just waits on rock ledges and coral ledges and waits for its prey to come to it and then eats its prey whole. This fish is very hardy but is not recommended for beginners because it requires live food and can be very difficult to learn how to feed in the proper requirements because they do not necessarily always accept frozen food. And if are overfed, they can die from starvation because they will not ex no longer accept food. Coming at the number five spot on our list, we have the bicolor fox face. This fish needs an aquarium size of 125 gallons to suit its needs. 
This fish is a peaceful fish, but that doesn't mean it can't be in a bigger tank with more aggressive fish like the a grouper, for example, it might be able to be in a tank with a grouper because it has venomous dorsal fins. This fish will eat your soft corals um, and your LPS corals, and it does eat algae. So if you um, just stick like algae on a clip and um, to the side of a tank, like from the fish store, you can buy it. Um, then you, you can just, it'll eat it, pick on it all day. It's really easy to feed it. Coming in at the number four spot on our list, we have the green mandarin. This fish needs at least a 30 gallon and it should not be uh, started out with beginners because uh, even though it's hardy, it really should be left to the people who have more experience with live food and picky eaters because sometimes these guys, when they come back from the wild, because most of the time people buy the wild ones, people don't necessarily know that they need to be fed copiapods. So they end up feeding them, trying to feed them mysis shrimp, which not all of them can learn how to be fed mysis shrimp because of their small mouths. And that is really difficult to learn for learning. Coming in at the number three spot on our list, we have the Engineer Gobi. This little guy needs a 55 gallon tank at least and plenty of sand for burrowing. I've always wanted one of these guys. They look really cool. They look just like an eel if you um, watch one. They poke their head out, you know. They always do better in pairs. As long as keep them well fed on a well diet of fresh seafood and frozen foods such as like mices and you know fresh shrimp and stuff like that. Coming in at the number two spot on our list we have the dwarf pygmy angelfish. This fish needs at least a 55 gallon aquarium. It can be a highly aggressive fish so watch out for that. Uh, it will mostly just be grazing on the microalgae on the rocks. It does like lots of hiding places, um, and it will it might pick at your clam, so uh, watch out for that. It may nip at your LPS corals or your um, soft corals, possibly, but I doubt it. Um, if as long as you keep it well fed, you should be fine. Just feed it algae, clips, and uh, mysis. Coming at the number one spot on our list, we have the Cubis boxfish. This fish is actually a fish that attracts a lot of people to the hobby, but then they find out, oh, it's an expert level. Oh, I have to have a 125-gallon tank. Oh, this fish can kill my whole tank. Oh, if this fish dies, it can kill my whole tank. Fish requires special feeding requirements. Yeah, so this this is just a trouble fish, but it's I've seen people actually take care of these fish really easily, but it just really depends on the person. Um, so it depends on how much time you're actually willing to put into the hobby and how much time you're actually willing to get out of it. So you can feed these guys like blood worms or like tube worms or something like that, though. They're not that difficult, I think, to feed, but I think it's just that people don't, I think you have to get blood worms alive, I'm not really sure, I've never really fed blood worms, so I don't really know what they are. Okay guys, make sure to like and subscribe to the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.